Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 uh, where you join me down on Norvis for part 2 of the video and over here this is where uh, Mark has recently started making um, making solar panels in sort of larger quantities and higher qualities so as you'll as you'll see over here we've got uh, the standard system of, um, of stations dropping off all kinds of useful resources and there's a trickle of immersite coming in from the north from goodness knows where okay this is coming in from oh, oh, there's, there's a station that drops it off up in circuit city uh, no, no there isn't there is a <laughs> delivery cannon chest that collects it that, that um, brings it in over in circuit in uh, in module city puts it into a warehouse where it can then be fed out into the um, into the systems here that will put it onto into a train into the train system or alternatively if you're nearby and a little bit impatient you can just take it away by a, a belt of doom that runs all the way around here um, down 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 here and gets fed on fed onto here and we also bring it oh yeah we're also trying to bring it in by train but uh, Mark obviously got a little bit impatient with that um, and that's being fed in down here and this is because in, in order to make, to make the Mark One um, solar panels this is relatively straightforward it's just um, green circuits is that iron or steel I think that's, I think that's steel um, so, so silicon and glass goes in here like that boom 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 yeah it is steel make solar panels but those aren't really all that great so we get we get the solar panel one out and that produces up to 100 kilowatts so we thought actually no with that that isn't good enough so we got moving on to the next one where you need you need the solar panels you also need electronic components and emersite crystals and nitric acid and that allows you to make advanced solar panels um, which produce 250 kilowatts each so that's more than twice as much and they're basically the same otherwise they're just they're just a slightly more efficient version of it that produces quite a bit more power in in the same I believe in the same sort of area so in order to get that, he's got a system here that's producing electronics components in quite large quantities that then flowing up here. Around here, they're being prioritised for coming down here into the into the solar panel construction. But he's also then got them flowing off over this way into a warehouse here for another station. So this is a pickup station for um, electronic components. So should we need those elsewhere, we can we can get them taken away. Because again, electronics components, there's, there's a lot of overlap between the... Um, the, the stuff being brought in for the solar panels so again we've got the glass and the silicon uh, but as well we also need plastic and lithium to be brought in as well so it condenses those down nicely into just into just one item and so maybe we I know we've got somewhere on the bus that's building those at the moment now we could if we wanted stop building them on the bus just start, just have them being built here instead and ship them over there by train that's it's an option that's available to us if we and the reason he's making these marked uh, these these advanced solar panels, which we're going to call Mark Twos, I guess, but because of, because of reasons, they can then be brought over and put into the rocket that goes up into uh, up to um, up to up to up to Norbit, uh, where where we can then think about the next step of the, of the solar panels. I'm not quite sure how they get in here. I have a feeling they, it might be it might be by bot. Uh, maybe they're being I don't know. Hopefully they're being I don't know. Hopefully they're not being brought all the way from over here down to here by bot. Actually, let's let's have a look and see what happens to them. So the Solar panels, they flow down here, they go in, They go into a station here. Okay, so they're almost certainly brought over to... I would expect them to be brought over to this system of stations here, but they don't seem to be. I am honestly not sure how they are being brought over to be put into the rocket. Um, but we'll, we'll find out another time. The point is, though, they are then being brought up to Norbit by the, by the rocket, which drops them into the system down here. They will then go on to the belt down here, which takes them all the way across here up here to where we are now combining those with holmium cables multi-spectral mirrors and holmium plates all of which are sort of being produced to some extent or another by the um, by the somewhat slightly dodgy energy one production facility over here so we've got the holmium cables being made by this machine we're also passing them out that way plates being made out and brought over here so it's a bit of a horrible spaghetti at the moment but since all of this is temporary i guess we can say this is temporary as well and we'll tidy that up and sort it out once we've got things finished we know we're definitely going to be getting these mirrors made in a um in a town somewhere at some point and brought in and put on the bus so maybe when that's done we can then put in the um solar panel construction up here um on on this system or maybe maybe we'll decide actually all of this holmium stuff we need another column this is getting a bit silly i don't know we shall see how it goes but um at the moment at the moment they're being made over here so we are now making the um the, the, the flat solar panel. So this is the third tier of solar panel, but since there is also a solar panel mark a flat solar panel mark two, I guess it's we're gonna have to look at this as the sort of the first step of the um of of the of the, uh, of the second step. Actually I think the, I think the other solar panels, maybe they're called something different. Let's have a look. Solar. So the, oh no these are called flat solar panel two and flat solar panel three. Okay. So we've got one, two, one, two, three. But 
never mind. So that, but the point of making these though is that these ones actually produce 400 kilowatts. So it's almost again tw almost a doubling of what the advanced solar panels are capable of producing. And these are a stepping stone onto producing the even 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 better ones, the holmium ones, um, at some uh, the, 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 or the tier two holmium ones at some point in the future. But we've not researched those. So, what that has meant is that Mark has now been able to start building this solar facility up here, which will hopefully solve all of our power production problems, because instead of having a single crappy solar panel in this space that produces 100 kilowatts, we've now got a flat one that is capable of producing up to... So 3.7 megawatts. Oh, of course, because now we've uh, because because we're in space, that's why. So we're able to produce significantly more power up here. And I think if we now have a look at the power graph over the last 10 hours, um, <clears throat> yeah, the amount of power produced by these solar panels has plummeted. The amount produced by these has shot up. Uh, and so we've we've got the same amount of power being produced in total, um, but it's now being produced by these ones, and we're at a much lower level of the cap cap production capacity. I think last time I looked, this was at 200 or 300 megawatts, and we've now got 1.1 gigawatt available. So, yeah, things are much looking much much better now. We have oodles of power available, which is a good thing because Tristan's starting to do energy science, and energy science is, as I'm sure you'll um, remember from my previous series, incredibly power hungry, especially when you start using the particle accelerators, which I am trying to find. They're these these bunnies over here, which, as you can see, have a maximum power consumption of 100 megawatts all by themselves. Now, sure, you can shove in an efficiency module, which makes that much much more. Um, much less ridiculous so i think we'll probably be doing that these are one of the few machines where i feel like it is worth putting in um, efficiency modules even in space where power is quite cheap because they just use so much of it so now i should go back down to norvisk because that's not the only thing that mark and mark has done all stream but he did leave me a nice little note here that uh, feels a little bit less passive aggressive than the ones that uh, mike usually leaves so he's also expanded out our covarexing system, which I think is here. Yes, that's spot on. Uh, so we've now got apparently four times as much of it. So um, I'm not quite sure exactly what, what, which, which rows were there before and which ones weren't. But this means now we've got um, quite a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the hot, hot uranium is now flowing back in to, in order to be, to go back into the process in order to get everything sort of up to speed. Which means we haven't got as much coming out here as we had before. But he has told us that there's some, we could just put a, put a, um, a stop on it somewhere if we need to. But this should mean that in a little while, once we've got enough of this available and we can feed it into all of the machines down here as well, I don't know how that's being done at the moment. But eventually, <laughs> we will have a, we'll, we'll have it being fed in down here. All of these, all of these will get up to speed. Everything will start running nicely, and we'll have significantly more of the U U two three five being made available. Um, I don't. I was going to say I don't know if he's put more um, production on, the, on this side in uh, to, to, to make sure we keep enough of the cold to, of the 238 coming through. It doesn't look like he has, so we might need to a further expansion of this might be of the uh, uranium ore processing might be required in order to support all of this covarexing. Um, but this is going to be extremely useful because a lot of the space sciences require large quantities of uranium. We're also using a bit of uranium over on Agnea in order to generate power because we can't do with because there's, there's a shortage of water there, so we can't do the free power. So we're using nuclear power instead, which is slightly better. Um, so that's probably what at least one of these guns is for. What's the other one? Um, here we have Nor oh Norbit Energy and Agnea. So that's why we're shipping. Yeah, we're shipping up to space for these two. Um, with this, this more may get rearranged at some point. We're using the train system. We shall see. Um, but yes, at the moment the, we're using quite. We're going to be using quite a lot of the uh, uh, of the U two three five for science purposes and also for generating a bit of power. But that's all going to be coming uh, happening in the future. As long as we've got a de decent supply of both available here, we'll be we'll be fairly happy. So we shall we shall see how it goes. Uh, may need we may need more uranium mines as well. Uh, I don't know. Mark has also ensured that the coal mine train is properly fueled. Um, Fine, that's great. We, uh, <laughs> um, that's 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 one of his minor minor changes. I just wanted to let us know about. Um, I know. Speaking of Mark, over on Big Red, he has um, basically finished off. So he's made sure everything's connected up. Everything's everything's available, and we'll start working when required. Um, and then he's, he's he's just left because now this planet is is done to to his satisfaction. He's he's gone out and claimed some of the. Okay, so he's claimed all of the of all of the core mining seams with ridiculously long belts. I mean that is. That is an option. Personally, I, t I prefer to use trains, but the belts are... I mean, the belts mean steadier throughput, so fine. And I guess because they're all linking up like this, then maybe it means uh, less resources used. I'm not entirely convinced of that, though. What are you doing? 
Uh, oh, you're taking life support. Why are you carrying a life support canisters? I think. That's, oh no, it's a filter. Okay, so he's using he's using bots to uh, to keep the, the the filters running. That's disgusting. I uh, I don't approve of that. I suppose that's the big advantage of using trains. You can use the uh, trains to take the uh, the dirty fil the clean filters out and the dirty filters away, as well as going out to fetch the um uh fetch fetch the actual core fragments that you that you need for the system. Um, but yes, that seems to be everything he's done here. So he's decided that this this is quite enough space, and I think yes, it definitely is. Um, and now he's he's, uh, he's 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 concentrating on other things like getting getting the solar up and running, and then possibly some sort of big project after that. So we've got a few ideas about that. But we'll talk about that in a moment after um, after we've touched on uh, what Mike has been up to out on Kothar, because this is going to be reasonably quick. Because Mike spent nearly all of his time here on Kothar going out uh, fighting biters so he's gone from having let's see originally I think he had a wall coming up here and across here and across here he then discovered the joys of nuclear artillery which you can tell by all of the scorch marks and pushed in in last week he pushed the wall out to here um, this week he's then pushed the wall further up to here and across to here and it turns out that's quite a dangerous thing to be doing um, He's, he's he died a few times doing that and some of those were a little bit ridiculous and I was actually watching them so uh, you get to see a little bit of the stream replay here of seeing uh, seeing Mike uh, dodging and diving and diving and dodging and zigging and zagging zagging and zigging just have a look at what's going on Rick <laughs> um, I, hope weave. I hope you're saying Gesundheit repeatedly uh... oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> nice. <laughs> I am impressed with your ducking and weaving. That's going. Thank you. The rocks, rocks. And there's no. more people above you. I found a way through. It's fine. Where's my body? Oh, I've gone past it. <laughs> oh. No. Oh. no. All to no avail because yeah, he didn't do it quite well enough. Uh, <laughs> still, it was um. It was entertaining for the rest of us to watch. <laughs> the other interesting thing about here, here, actually, is you'll notice some of the areas have lots and lots of nuclear scorch marks, but some don't, because Mike has been using an interesting combination of both nuclear and conventional artillery to, to deal with the area. I think he feels that the nuclear artillery might be a little bit overkill some of the time, so um, when there's a big um, glob of, of um, a biter nests, like, um, I mean, to be honest, this is probably big enough. Yeah, sure, drop a nuke on that one. But if it's just sort of one or two, and a load of worms like this, then it actually, because the worms are so tough, it seems to be more effective just to use the regular artillery on them, because these guys, uh, well, it's only a big one, there we go, beer moth worm, um, that one will take, will, will, unless the nuke hits it dead on, and possibly even then, it will laugh off a nuclear strike for, uh, nearby, so you then need to go in and clean up anyway. Uh, the, the, the green biters tend to be the same as well, they've got so much health, not that those are spitters, they've got so much health, um, where is it? Five thousand, more than five thousand health, and a load of armorers and resistances as well. That actually dropping nukes on them is less effective than we would like it to be. So you're often better off with the sort of the with the um, <clears throat> a big square of artillery guns and some la and a load of laser defenses in front of it. Um, and so that's why there's less scorch marks across here. So I guess in the future he's going to be claiming this other um, core seam here. Maybe some of the uh, maybe some of the iridite patches around, especially that one because it's 10 million, or that one because it's 27 million. That's a rather good one, um, and, and 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 dealing with that. He's also put he's also on his what he's referring to as his um, small because it's like a mall but smaller. Uh, he's added in concrete making. Is that you? Uh, yes, it is. We're making concrete here, and are you refined concrete. What's this? So this is. This is this is this is concrete. This is refined concrete. I was right, and this is hazard con refined hazard concrete. So the pretty one. Uh, he's collecting those up, and also using them to make. Or he's using the concrete to make the walls, to make the spiky walls. Uh, so he can then he can then he can then drop those in all the way around here to defend his to defend the area that he's um, spent so much blood, sweat, and tears in in liberating. <laughs> And he's also started over, uh, where is it, where, where is his iridium, iridium aeration, over here, yes. So because he'd got so much backed up, iridium backed up all the way up here, and this, this warehouse was, at the time, was full, he's uh, sorted out the station. So this is the one I was talking about in the uh, in the last video, uh, where I was saying, or last week's video, rather, um, where I was saying I wasn't quite sure what he was doing with this station, because it was a drop-off station. Um, 
but it looked like it should be it should be being fed as a pickup station. So he's gone in here and he's reprogrammed this up round now to be a to be a pickup station. So all of the uh, all of the excess iridium that was, that was building up in here is now being passed out into here, where it can be then be taken away for potential future spaceship purposes or maybe for who knows he might find another use for iridium on this planet so at the very least this could be treated as a stockpile and then if we start shooting it out of these guns faster than it can it can be uh, produced we can turn all these belts around again and feed the sort of the the uh, 16,000 out of these um, out of these warehouses back into this one and then along to the guns. We'll see. I mean, we, at this at this stage, we don't know exactly when it's going to be required. But having put all of the effort into making all of this this iridium infrastructure, I think he decided that it was going to be worth keeping it running rather than having it just go to sleep because we'd made enough of it. So, what's going to be next? Well, I think I think Mike is pretty much done with this planet i think he's probably had enough of it so there are a number of things on the, on the list of things that things that could be done next so tristan is going to be carrying on with energy science i'm going to be carrying on with astro science and the science park so those are those are pretty much set we know we already know what we're doing the other two have some decisions to make so one there are a few things so uh, mike could carry on with doing stuff in his color and start work on the um, material science so we're, we're going to need material science quite soon because that's one of the things we need for our, our current next big goal um, and then the other, the, the question, and then so that that'd be quite a good thing for him to be doing. But we've got a few possible ideas for things that um, Mark could be doing. So we we've, we've got the one I've been talking about a little bit is ta is uh, on Talos. We have the supply of beryllium being made, and it's not there's not a huge amount of it at the moment. This is all quite slow, as I've talked about before, because I can because like a muppet, I came out here without with, uh, before we had beacons, didn't set it up thinking about beacons. So this whole system just really really slow this whole so the whole thing needs beaconing to bring it up to speed now that's not going to be too hard because there's there's room along here to put speed beacons in in this in this in this gap uh, and in this gap along here and in the gap along here so this whole system could be brought up to speed they will probably throw everything out of balance because suddenly lots of the machines will start running a bit faster we'll go and we'll put in a lot more uh, productivity modules and everything will be produce, just producing a lot more um, but that's that's not too much of a problem because of the, because it's designed with extensibility in mind at least until you get up to this wall we do also now have um, artillery which we didn't have when i came out here so that means now that we could push the biters back further we could we could set up more uh, more core mining more core mine setups maybe maybe just clear out this entire area around here uh, mark seems to be quite enjoy or at least be quite happy to clear out large quantities of biters so yeah we could liberate a much larger area here get some more core mine uh, uh, core seams available get up set the core mines up and then possibly even go in and, and start popping some of these barrel seams um, because that would allow us to speed things up a bit over here. Uh, that said, I mean, at the moment, the system is currently absolutely fine with the core mining, uh, with just the core mining, and we aren't using beryllium at a particularly high rate over in Norbit yet. Once we start trying to build spaceships, that'll change, of course. But at the moment, we're not—we're only using it at a trickle, so this is currently sufficient. So it's future-proofing; it's not absolutely required. <clears throat> Another possibility is to expand the cryonite production. So uh, on Drakit at the moment, we have this system here that Tristan built up, where he is he is mining from all of the core seams, and that is producing a stream of cryonite that actually right now appears to be enough. We seem to have we seem to have a supply of cryonite available, um, which is interesting because I thought we were very very short of it. Um, Maybe this is because Holmium production has slowed down and, and backed up or something like that. Um, but potentially at some point, once everything gets flowing properly, I suspect we're going to need more cryonite. So there are a couple of choices there. One is to come out and, and uh, set up more mines on here and just get this system running faster. The other possibility is to go out to another cryonite uh, planetoid, and we ha which we have in the form of Snowdrop out here, which is much, much bigger. So there's going to be a lot more cryonite available on it, more more core seams, more just more cryonite. And it has a 0% threat, so it'd be quite a ni nice one to go out to and just start working on, um, because there won't be any worry of biters on there. And so that's another possibility. We could go out there and start, start getting even more uh, cryonite being, being produced. Uh, biological science is another possibility. So that is again a color-coded task. Uh, so <laughs> Mark, being the green player, he he could go out and start doing the biological sciences. The biosciences are less of a priority at the moment for us. Um, he has set up the vitamin so we do have that available for when we want it. But at the moment, the the biosciences tend they tend not to get the, the really fun toys. Um, so they get you biter -to capsules. They do get you personal upgrades. Uh, I think can't find them at the moment but i'm pretty sure they do and they do get you they do get you better um uh better productivity modules as well so there are reasons to do biosciences um but they don't tend to be quite as exciting as the as the uh toys you get from from the other ones so but it is something we're going to need to do at some point so that is that is another possibility uh, another one is going going out to a uranium um planetoid uh such as 
do we do we have a uranium we do we have crane now, that's that's good in my previous game we i didn't have a uranium planet so he could go there um it's got a, it's got a threat level of 33 percent and it does and 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 by and of, of bite meteors because there is vitamalange on the planet but there is also a huge quantity of uranium available so going out there and digging up uranium might be worthwhile as well and so, yeah, we, I guess we'll see. And <laughs> I'm noticing how many of these things are green themed. So we've got the uranium ore is the uranium is green. Uh, bioscience is green. Cryonite is not green. Cryonite is, is sort of blue colour, so that means I should be doing that one, but I didn't, so never mind. Uh, so yeah, there's there's lots of possibilities in there. Uh, and then and, and we'll, we'll, we'll decide which of those seems to be the most useful uh, at some point in the future. So that brings us on to the death counters. As you, as, as touched on earlier, uh, Mike had a few um, unfortunate moments. The uh, the most ridiculous one was when he accidentally fired a nuke into a rock that was right in front of him and blew himself up. And that was what started the ducking and diving and the trying to get back to his body that you saw earlier. And that's why he was running rather than flying. So that gives Mike a total of three more deaths in the last session. One to the said point blank nuke to the face and two to worms because he was running through fields of worms on, on his way over there, desperately trying to get back to his corpse before it despawned de after 15 minutes. But other, other than that, none of the rest of us have all managed to stay alive, so uh, well done there. <laughs> I think that brings us pretty much to the end of the video, so I hope you've enjoyed it. This has been a little bit shorter than yesterday's video, but um, most of the most of the uh, happenings at the moment are, are in, in Norbit, so that's where all the exciting science is going on, so there's, there's a bit less to talk about around the rest of the universe. Um, so yes, please check out the uh, channel sponsor, tree4.be, uh, they'll give you a, a, and you can get a 20% discount by using the code LawrencePlays on checkout, they, they host Factorio and Minecraft and so on servers for you. Um, also uh, come back on, uh, to, not tomorrow, no today, Saturday, <laughs> come back on Monday to see us uh, carrying on with all these things I've been talking about, that's the uh, next stream, 7.30pm UK time. On Tuesday there will hopefully be a Factorio video of some sort, just talking about sort of general stuff rather than a catch up. On Wednesday there will be an XCOM stream, Thursday we will have a GTA video, and then Friday and Saturday will be your, the, the usual Factorio catch up videos to tell you what's been going on. So I hope to see you back for loads of that stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything, and thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.